Randy Hicks never thought much about heaven or hell. He was too busy getting high. But all that changed when Randy took an unplanned trip where no one wants to go. I just knew that I was going to hell. And I knew that was the enemy that came for me. Because when I looked up, I looked right into his face and eyes. And it, it was so huge, it was almost looked like a fallen angel. And he had the horns of a ram, and it was horrible. When I looked into his eye sockets, it was like looking into death and hell. The best way I can describe it, it was a darkness within a darkness. Randy Hicks' drug use and his eventual overdose had kept him living in darkness since early in his childhood. He grew up one of nine children in rural Illinois with little parental supervision. I got high when I was eight years old. Uh, two of my brothers had got me out in the garage smoking a bong. That was the first time I ever used marijuana. I'll never forget it. I loved it. Randy's brothers hid the goods in the garden out back, in their school bags, or even under the mattress. One time I found some white powder in there. It was cocaine. I didn't know what it was, and I touched it, and it had numbed my lips. And I was like, wow, that's some strange stuff. And one day I just happened to watch my brother sniff it, and I sniffed some too. And the time I got to high school, I was a freshman. You know, people, people were selling it to make money. time I was a senior in high school, I was selling big time. After graduation, Randy joined the military. I ended up being a tanker, an armor crewman, and they sent me to Fort Irwin, California. Well, up there, crystal meth was big. Well, when I got up there, I got hooked up with the wrong people. I started drinking heavier, and then I really started going on a binge with crystal meth. Oh my God, I was so addicted. It was like I couldn't live without it. I breathed it from the time I got up in the morning to the time I went to bed. I, I started selling stuff to get it. And they sent me to rehab. And eventually they, they released me from the military. It bothered me. I was like, man, I had this great opportunity to turn my life around. Why did I get go back to doing the drugs? But it only got worse. Randy spent a year in jail for robbing a gas station. He was so high, he doesn't even remember holding a gun to the clerk's head. When he got out of jail, he overdosed. He was only 27. They went ahead and pulled a white sheet up on me because they said I was going to die. They called my family in. When I woke up, it was the most frightening moment because I looked down and I'm looking at a white sheet. Doctors discovered Randy was still alive. After running numerous tests, he was released. But even that near-death experience wasn't enough to scare Randy straight. Randy married, but the alcohol and drug use continued, eventually destroying the relationship. In 1997, Randy's wife left him with their two young children. And I was smoking weed, and I still did a little coke. Not like I used to, but I was still doing it, yes. The moment that changed that, all of a sudden my body collapsed to the ground. I felt something physically dragging me out of my body. And I mean, I looked up and I saw death and I saw hell in his eyes. And it had these huge horns. It, it curled around like a ram and death just filled the room and it scared me. I could visibly feel my spiritual man separating from my flesh. I didn't feel no pain, but I felt it leaving, trembling in fear. And immediately I fell on my face and I cried out, Jesus. I said, forgive me of my sins. God, help me with my addictions. Take it all away. Just don't let me go to hell, please. I was begging. I was crying. I did everything I knew. And as soon as I looked at the door, my door opened. And I saw this long, white, glowing robe, white. There's just no white in this world you can describe it. I knew without a doubt that the moment I cried out for Jesus, that God had showed up right there and saved me at the moment I cried out. From that moment, uh, man, I just wanted to know God. I wanted to know Jesus. I wanted to know this one who, when I knew without a doubt I was going to hell, came for me. Immediately, Randy's craving for drugs and alcohol was replaced with a hunger and thirst for Jesus. 
I travel and share what God brought me from, what I went through, what it will do to you, and how Christ is the answer. When you call on that name Jesus, He is there right there. And He is ready to receive you and to forgive you of all your sins. He's ready to receive you and forgive you for all your sins. Now here's what the Bible says about what we're talking about. He's talking about the fall of the devil, Satan. And the Bible says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then we skip down a little bit in Revelation, and death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he <clears throat> was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, we're not talking about some horrible uh, fantasy. We're talking about the real thing. But you look at another part of Revelation, Revelation 22, and it says there will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his bondservants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will no longer be any night, or they will not have any need of light of a lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will illuminate them, and they will reign forever and ever. Now here's also, he said, outside this heavenly city are the dogs, the sorcerers, and the immoral persons, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. Now, that's the choice. No longer any sickness, no longer any suffering. There'll be no more pain, there more, no more suffering, because Jesus Christ has paid the price. And he's opening paradise for us. He's giving us a chance of a life that is beyond belief. The Apostle Paul says, I hasn't seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. It is so wonderful. So why would anybody want to go to hell? Why would you do it? <clears throat> you can joke like Ted Turner and said, well, there'll be plenty of people in hell. Yeah, sure. Silence. Outer darkness agonizing fire, lake of fire, reserved for the devil and his angels. You don't want that. But you do want to be with the Lord in that heavenly city where the Lord God will be in the center. And you will have indescribable joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do you want it? Do you want the blessing? It is so wonderful what God has planned for us. Bow your head and pray these words, Jesus. I don't want the lake of fire. I want the heavenly city. I want to be with the company of the redeemed. I want to be before the throne of God. I want to behold your face and to serve you. I open my heart to you, Lord, and I ask you now, I believe you, come into my life. In Jesus' name, live with me, in me and for me, and I'll live for you, Lord, from this moment on. Thank you, Lord. Amen.